What's up, everybody? This is Beanie with WTTL Sports Show Podcast. I got my co-host, Mr. Ezra Case in the third. And I got my little dude, or should I say my big dude, my son Liam is on here with us for a little bit. It's almost his bedtime. Or actually, not almost. It's his bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to be on here with us a little bit. Yeah, I'm still staying on you for like 25 seconds. 25 seconds? All right. We're going to hold you. We'll hold you to it. You think you're natural? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Put your hand down. (laughs) So, what's up, little dude? Why are you joining us tonight? Good. He said, Why are you joining us tonight? Why are you joining us? Because. You don't have nothing else to do? I'm going to see you, Mr. Oh. He said he wanted to see Mr. Bean. Oh, that's awesome. All right, cool deal. Uh, I like glasses. Thank you. So, I got a question, dude. This season two, we're getting started. See my, my banner in the background. Welcome to the League Sports Show. We're at season two. We had a pretty good first season. I think, you know, under the circumstances of everything that's happening, we had a whole lot of things going on. Throughout the year, um, man, I mean, crazy year. Rams suck. <laughs> the Jets actually ended up being pretty good, like we thought. Detroit Lions actually ended up being pretty good, like I thought. Uh, Minnesota got close, but not close enough. Uh, Eagles made it to the like Super Bowl, like I thought, and better. got and lost thanks to the referees. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Eagles, Eagles, we <laughs> said the referees. The referees. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing that happened to them was they had to go against Andy Reid. Yes, sir. We're, yes, sir. Oh, you want me? Okay, I'll take that. You going to say good night? Good night. Good night, dude. So, wait, I want to say this real quick. My son is a big Jets fan, and we're going to talk about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets here in a little bit. Cool deal? Okay. Okay, cool, dude. All right, good night. Oh, uh, where my stuff at, dude? Good night. Good right night. there. <laughs> All right. Yes, good night, good night dude. Go. Oh, it's not fishing. Yep, shh. No, good night. Good <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Liam. All right. So, Ooh. with that, man, all right. We're getting ready to, uh, <laughs> mom put down the rules. She make me go to bed, too, sometimes. It's like you need to turn this stuff off and go lay down. I'm like, yes, boss. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, so we got a little bit to talk about. And you were right, man. Like I like I said in the season finale, dude. Um, you you were on this time last year, you were on the Philadelphia Eagles like nobody else was. And I mean, you stuck with it the whole time. Everybody called you crazy. And so even by week five. Week six, everybody still like, I don't know. Week seven, week eight, everybody's like, oh, wait a minute. Eagles the real deal. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah, that was good stuff with the Eagles, man. But yeah. you it's cannot really nice see the Eagles do that, even though they, <clears throat> they didn't quite get the job done in the, in the Super Bowl, but they'll be back, and- they'll be back to the NFC. They're definitely number one in the NFC right now. Yeah. I think the landscape of the NFC about to change yes. drastically. Let, let me throw this out there real quick before we say that. I do want to say that you cannot take anything away from Patrick Mahomes' second half for a quarter. You cannot. If you, you know, leave him enough room, and I say enough room for Patrick Mahomes is down two scores, I might be pressing it to say three, but if he's down two, the game is not over. And that's basically where it happened. And but at the same time, like I said, you called it, man. And I do agree with you that the landscape of the NFC is about to change yet again. Last year we had it seemed like an abandonment situation where everybody was just like, uh, you know, what how do they say it? Uh abandoned ship. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody got traded to the AFC for some reason. You had Devontae Adams leave. You had uh, 
who else left? Um, oh my gosh, it was uh, Devontae Adams is just the one that really, really sticks out. Um, you got everybody switching places. I mean, just all kind of stuff happened last year. So this year, what's one of the biggest things NFC wise that you think has been like crazy impactful? Just and and just say this: the league year has not started yet. League yeah. year starts on Monday. Well, the tampering period is Monday. Uh, or yeah, since we're gonna since we're gonna be posting this on Wednesday, free agency period is started. Starts started Tuesday on Wednesday. They can March start talking 13th. on Monday. Tampering March thirteenth. Free agency March fifteenth. So you have the Tampa period, then you have the actual free agency period starts. Now, prior to all of that happening, we have what that sticks out in your mind as the biggest thing that's happened so far. So far, the biggest thing this offseason, and like you said, it just started. We're probably going to be one of the most impactful moves so far. Is going to be Two things, actually. One's going to affect the NFC, one's going to affect the AFC. This is my opinion. Number one, we're going to go to AFC. Sean Payton is the head coach of the Denver Broncos. Okay. Saints fans, we're sad. We don't want him coaching another team, but he is. He's coaching the quarterback he's always wanted to coach. In the right. Wilson. So, yes, that is going to be impactful in the sense that that kind of shifts a little bit of that West Conference now. Now, I know we okay. were high on Denver last year because Russ went over there and Denver stunk it up, but we might just yeah. go into the season again this year high on Russ because Sean Payton's there now. Now, if anybody goes back and watches any of our videos from last year and they find out that, I, said that I was high on, on, on Denver, then I want y'all to call me out on it. But I don't believe I was high on Denver last year. I was high Broncos. on Denver last year. Let's ride. No, I was not. Let's I'm ride. like, let's ride. Now, the other thing this year, you're... this year I am going to be high on them um, for a few reasons. We'll talk about that when you tell tell me the second thing. What's your second thing? Because we're going to go back to this whole Sean Payton situation. The second thing that is going to be impactful, and it's going to be impactful because of how the landscape of the NFC probably will change now. With Rodgers leaving, Minnesota basically blowing apart their team. And rebuildings. You've seen that. But this one is going to make the NFC South not the joke next season. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. You know what? It, it, might, it might be just biasm. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm getting my end of Elvely. I can get the number four from on car and I'll have me a new number four car jersey when the season starts. <laughs> yeah. Five guys right. at quarterback right. in New Orleans. It took long enough. Okay. Not yeah, that Andy yeah. Dalton wasn't a quarterback, but, I mean, it's Derek Carr. Come on now. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think Andy Dalton was kind of going through the motions. Not saying that he wasn't playing his best, but I don't think, like, that's his stopping spot. I think Andy Dalton would probably do really good if he were in Cleveland. Or if they gave him an opportunity to play. In well, with that team. being said, though, if Aaron Rodgers actually does go – to the Jets, like we were talking a while ago, just a second yeah. ago. The AFC just got even stronger, and I think that would be the dumbest move on Aaron Rodgers' part he could do, honestly. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. But, okay, so let's let's go NFC South first. We're going to go to NFC South first. Then we're going to backtrack to the Broncos. Okay. So, NFC South first. NFC South, landscape has changed. One, because Tom Brady is retired. Yes. Finally, and for real. No Tom Brady. Um, For now. And I know we got a, I know we have a, <laughs> and I was getting ready to say that. I know we got a 60 day waiting period. You know, we, <laughs> Tom Brady comes with, with a probationary period. If we make it to July and I know Tom Brady, then we know it's real. <laughs> yeah. Tom, yeah. He, he has a, he has a, uh, he has a uh, waiting period for retirement. He, he has that, definitely. like that grace period. Gonna Not 90 period. days, but you got to give him 60, you know, at least 40. You got to give him at least 40 days to uh, make up his mind. Now, there were some things that came out that he may come back, and he said, nah, 
I just bought my daughter a cat, so <laughs> <laughs> and we're taking the hair of that. So I think he mm-hmm. I think he's legit, uh legit retired. But so you, you got Tom Brady, he's gone. You have uh Desmond Ritter, who is gonna be the, the incumbent starter because there's no more Marcus Mariota. Yes. Then you have the wait, no. the new Saints, the New Orleans Saints who has Derek Carr and is back with his old head coach. I forgot Dennis Allen was his head coach mm-hmm. while he was in with the Raiders. Yeah, so he's back with Dennis so Allen. Totally so people when they said when he left, things. when Derek Carr came out here and left. After that first meeting, they're like, I was saying, oh, we're not going to get him. Like, if you thought for a second as a Saints fan that Derek Carr was not going to end up in New Orleans, you are yeah. not paying attention to TV. Yeah, you weren't paying attention to sports. Sports in so, general. Because... I, forgot, I forgot Dennis Allen was there because in my mind, of course, Dennis Allen has been the, the defensive coordinator for a minute and then, um, here in New Orleans. So, yeah, you got Derek Carr in New Orleans. You got – um. Desmond Ritter in Atlanta. You have Tampa Bay, which might be the more interesting more interesting situation because I did not know this until about five minutes before recording. Baker Mayfield has been linked to Tampa Bay. Yeah. As a potential for, landing actually, spot for him. Actually, he's been linked for a minute, but it's been getting stronger here lately just because um, how Kyle Trask is their quarterback, and the yeah. best thing to do is to bring in, bring in Baker Mayfield, have a quarterback competition, and see who takes the reins of that team. And that's where they are. And I think for for that particular organization, that is where in I'm going to use the Rams terminology. I'm not going to say rebuilding. I'm going to say remodeling. that's another person who's blowing apart their team, the Rams. Wait, hold up. We ain't going to talk about them yet. Get up off my team. We talk about yours. We're going to talk about yours. When we get to mine, I'll handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk mad about yours. <laughs> Just like Minnesota, they're blowing up our team. I'm, I'm, I'm still in my feelings right now about number five. But I know. we'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> All right. So, so we have Derek Carr. And then one of the biggest situations to happen so far this offseason with like I want to say probably a five point seven or a six point two uh Richter scale grade or whatever um was the Carolina Panthers trading away DJ Moore yes, that's huge. for and what DJ Moore and whatever else they gave up like three first round picks first and like a late rounder. Yeah. To move up to the first spot front with this the Chicago early. Bears number one pick, dude. And like know, so, they just basically said, "Hey, we can Was it Matt Corral, Sam Donald, whoever else we have on our team? You Frank Reich put said, y'all, in. y'all, y'all are not enough. So we need to go ahead and get this number one. I want, I want to talk about that trade in a second, but I want to point out something." I did not realize – another thing I didn't realize until earlier today when I saw the um, graphic from the research department. Do you realize with the Carolina Panthers trade of D.J. Moore to Chicago, that the Chicago wide receiving core now is Chase Claypool, D.J. Moore, and Daryl Mooney? Yes. And now, I know that, that's a young wide receiving core? Kind yes. of young? Bro, but Justin Fields, it, dude. Then you you don't have to. I want play Justin Aaron Fields Donald back anymore. now. Can I have Justin Fields back? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I want crazy. him back now. And and yeah, if y'all don't understand what we talk, we talk about fantasy and dynasty. We have a dynasty league on uh, our favorite. Not that this is not an endorsement, yeah, but on our favorite money. <laughs> <laughs> Give us money, sleeper. <laughs> but our, <laughs> our favorite fantasy draft, fantasy uh, app is Sleeper, and we have have two leagues actually, and we moved the league from 
one of the other platforms over to the sleeper platform. Yes, this we moved. Welcome to the league, our redraft league, and Bounty Gate was on yeah. sleeper last season, which Nuh-uh. is our league. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they were on. And sleeper. Welcome to the league, the yeah, league not, that spawned we're this not gonna podcast. Say, it got moved over there now. Yeah, we're not gonna say what platforms we were on. Yeah, but yes, yeah, we moved over to sleeper man until we find out that there's something better. Like right now, sleeper is killing it. Like seriously, sleeper is Definitely. killing it, man. Sleeper, pay but, us. Um, <laughs> but but that sleeper probably say, do some more fantasy leagues. Do some more fantasy leagues. We will. But neither here nor there. Awesome paychecks. I'm looking. I'm I'm looking at um I'm looking at Chicago, man, and Chicago, Chicago yes, solid. To me, Chicago to me is. What team can I compare them to? You can. Chicago to me is like Detroit. No, they are. They're like Detroit. To me, Chicago all is like the team they, you built in franchise mode on Madden. <laughs> right now, but 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 no, they they kind of remind me of Detroit. Their defense kind of got blown up a little bit last year. You know, they lost some pieces through trades, through releases, and whatever the situation may be. But I don't. I still think that they're they're not a shabby defense. Oh, no. Their offense just got better. I mean, especially since it it seems as though somewhere along the end before Justin Fields got injured, that um the the coaching staff understood who they had as a quarterback, and he started you know being they started using him according to his talents and what they had around him. And now you go. And to I think that's what they're gonna do now. They're gonna play to their strengths. Yeah, yeah. And now you go to this whole trade situation. They did two things. They fortified their relationship and confidence in their quarterback. And the quarterback knows that he is the guy. He's not looking over his, his shoulder, wondering if there's going to be another another quarterback to come in. And I'm going to use Trey Lance in San Francisco. Trey Lance in San Francisco, you got – they wouldn't get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. So Trey Lance is still looking over his shoulder. Now you got Brock Purdy, who was picked up in what sixth or seventh round this past year, Mr. and then he Irrelevant comes in last and season. he plays. Was it? Yeah, he's Mr. Irrelevant. Last player picked seventh round, and what he plays seven games or eight games and wins all but one, and that in the playoffs. So Trey Lance is like, do I even have a job? Is that even a question? I don't think it's a question. No. So what, what the Chicago Bears did in this trade was they took all of that away from Justin Fields. Justin Fields doesn't have to worry exactly. about it. They're that. like, look, we are confident in you. You are the man. Yes. This is your team. You are our guy. Yes, yeah. you are our guy. We got you some weapons. Now let's go out and do this thing. And like I said, let's go win the NFC North next season. Starting to, yeah, starting to turn. Yeah, NFC North is going to be crazy. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to talk about that next episode. So, all right, is. so that's Chicago. That, going back to New Orleans, I think New Orleans is in a, in a better situation. We got to figure out what they're going to do on this cap because you got a lot of guys. Well, they're restructuring. A lot of guys. They're restructuring more contracts. Um, I think the Saints at some point this free agency are probably putting in another wide receiver because the Javaris yeah. Landry trade, the Landry bringing yeah. next last year didn't work out. Maybe they bring him back. Maybe they bring in somebody else. Maybe they bring in OBJ. I think they should bring him back. I don't know what they do. They bring in who? Maybe they bring, they bring in, in OBJ. Stadium? OBJ, Odell Beckham nah. Jr. Won't happen. I see OBJ in one of three places. For 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 a sake of sentimentality, I, I say Los Angeles. Because with them releasing not releasing. Well, I'm sorry. With them releasing Leonard Floyd and with the trade of Jalen Ramsey, which we're gonna talk about that in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm still in my feelings. But we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But with that being the thing, there's a possibility because they they were one of the I want to say it was twelve or twenty eight teams that went out to see him this past Friday, uh, for a private workout. So now there's been teams in contact that you know per per um I think it's like Tom Pelissieri, Adam Schefter, whomever it was, um between uh Bleacher Report, um you know multiple news uh sports news platforms, ESPN, NFL network, so on and so forth, that, you know, there's been conversations but no negotiations yet. 
But you know that Jerry Jones has been high on uh OB Jackson. Yeah, so see, a, he might end up at over there. That's a good fit. That's a good fit. And you get a person like an OBJ in there with CD Lamb, with um, Gallup, Gallup with who? Uh, what's my 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 running backs? Pollard and Elliott. If they, because I think they franchise tag. Franchise they franchise tag Pollard. Pollard and they restructured Elliott's contract. Yeah, so you got Dalton Schultz. You got. Uh, I mean, they got the weapons. probably to get Dalton Schultz old- back. I'm not sure they resigned him or not. I think they want. I think they're gonna. I think they were supposed to get him back. But either way, if they get him back, but th- it puts them in a situation they get an OBJ that Dak Prescott, if he does not make it all the way, That's he can make it happen. to the Super Bowl and lose. He can make it to the Super Bowl and lose and be okay. But he can't make it to the playoffs this time. Agreed. 100%. With additional weapons. 100%. And I think not Dallas is going to do Bowl. that now. Because Dallas realized yeah, that their window's closing. Yeah. Dallas' window's so, closing. So this offseason, this free agency, the draft around the corner in April, um, Dallas is going to pull a Rams, pull a Eagles, Bucks, whoever you want to say it. Throw the book, okay. man. We're gonna bring so, them all in. We're gonna go all in right now because Dallas fans are tired of losing in the first round. Yes, they are. Now let's let's get off of Dallas and Jerry Jerry Jones. We're gonna move off of Jerry. Jerry, and we're gonna go. We're gonna go back to Denver for the Broncos. Denver. All right, Broncos now. country. Let's ride. <laughs> So, yes. a couple of things with them. A couple of things with them. Denver, I think they work out their running game. Oh, yeah. They work, and, and, and a lot of people would, would probably say that the offense was not built for Russell Wilson. I don't think it was just that. I think it was um, more social issues. I was watching one game, and I, I want to say it actually was Rams and, and Broncos. Um, when the Rams and Broncos played, where Russell got Russell Wilson got sacked, and none of his offensive linemen helped him up. None. I think there was a lot of there was, was a lot of animosity was, in that was, locker room. Yeah, yeah. So I I think with the hire of Sean Payton, Sean Payton rallies the troops. He creates a game plan. Else. He creates a game plan for the personnel that he has. He gets Russell Wilson to become the leader that he needs to be and rectifies those relationships. And you see a totally different uh, Denver Broncos team this year. Now, we know who Sean Payton is with the Saints. Will he be that same Sean Payton with? The Broncos, for better or for worse, is you know what we're looking at this season. So that's what I that's that's my take on on the Broncos. The Broncos are a very interesting situation to watch. It really yeah, is. They are. And it's gonna it's gonna continue being interesting. I don't want Sean Payton to be successful with the Denver Broncos. I do. I do. I do, man. You're not I a do. Saints fan. Not, <laughs> no, I, and I'll tell you the reason why. Because y'all as Saints fans, when somebody leaves y'all, y'all hard to break up with, for real. But you'll kick somebody, you'll break up with somebody in a minute, but can't nobody break up with you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, it, it's terrible. It's terrible, bro. The, the Saints want to be the dumper and not the dumpy. <laughs> it's true. Saints fans like, yeah, get him out of here. Mike Dicker. Everybody wanted to break up with Mike Dicker. We're going to go all the way back to Dicker. Jim Haslett, he got what he was able to work with. Because they hardly gave him anything. And when they did start giving him something, guess what? He got fired or had to quit or whatever the situation was. And then you got Sean Payton. Sean Payton inherited better players than had been on this team, been on the Saints team up to that point by any Sean coach. Payton also, like, found a lot or, of good players and diamonds in the row. Yeah, and, and I will – that's not taking anything away from Sean Payton. 
you know, especially when y'all go out and you get a Drew Brees to add to what you have, because that's what you were missing at the time. And so Sean Payton was able, he was constant, constant, constant about um, consistently uh, going to the playoffs. Y'all were always a winning team. And when I moved here, I'm like, good Lord, man, why are y'all still fucking? Y'all always in the playoffs. Where at the time, my Rams were 11 years from the last playoff. And I, I want to say the last time they were able to get in the playoffs, they played the Carolina Panthers and got put out of the playoffs. And guess who was the one of the wide receivers at the time? Mm-hmm. Tory Holt. Tory Holt. Tory big name Holt. Holt. And I come here in 2014, and you guys are like, man, Sean Payton, Sean Payton, and Sean Payton. I'm like, really, bro? I'm going to need y'all to calm down. <laughs> we got Jeff. Look, y'all got Sean Payton. We got Steve Spagnolo, And then he's gone. Y'all got Sean Payton. We got Jeff Fisher. And then he's gone. Y'all got Sean Payton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. The last good coach we had before uh, Sean McVay was Mike Martz, who at the time was the winningest coach in NFL over the time period that he had been a coach, head coach and an office coordinator. He had the best winning record of any coach during his period of coaching with the Rams from 99 until whenever it was that he lost. You know, um, I think the only coach that probably had a better winning percentage or was about even with Bill Belichick. And that was it. Up to that point. Because they hadn't won all those uh all those uh Super Bowls yet. So I'm saying up to the point of You get no sympathy but, from our Saints fans. Yeah, I know. Like I said, y'all y'all, y'all hard to break up with. You get ready no to break sympathy. up with somebody in a minute. Yeah. So that's a whole nother The Rams will never get about. sympathy from the Saints. Oh no, we don't want y'all sympathy. We don't need it. We all right, man. We all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look. We're gonna take a brief little break right here, and uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes, a all few right. seconds, because when it gets cut or whatever. All right. So when we come back, we're gonna be talking. Uh, Jalen Ramsey. We're gonna be talking Rams Dolphins, and we're gonna be talking about the elephant in the room which is Lamar Jackson. Full predictions. Maybe. Yeah. Lamar, Lamar, Lamar. All right. We'll be right back. What's up, everybody? This is Beanie. Um, I'm going to take a brief moment to remind you to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify, follow us on Anchor, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you get your social media at, we're going to try, we're going to, try to be there, and um, I'm going to thank y'all again for supporting us, and without no further ado, back to the show. Alright y'all, we are back, this is Ezra, and I got my dude, Petey. Beanie. All right, man, look. So let's go ahead and talk about my Rams. My Rams. Ooh. All right. So, all right, no, seriously, though. We all know the Rams are blowing apart your know. team. No. We all know the Rams are blowing apart your team right now to rebuild. Wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yes, they are, but they aren't. Like, one, contracts I never agreed with. I agree with Jalen Ramsey's contract just because he is the player that he is, not was. He is the player that he is. Some of the plays that he got beat on last year, I will say that it was a combination of one of two things. And I know if he were to hear this, which he may or may not, I do believe that there are a couple of times that he took a playoff. Just going to say. I believe there was one or two times over the course of the season and he took a playoff just because, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Now, that's not to say that he hasn't played, like, to the best of his ability. But I, I believe that out of frustration of how everything went this season, um, yeah, I think, like, man, why? 
why. And he's one of the only people that didn't get injured last year. So his contract, I never, never, uh, never questioned, never second guessed, never anything. Like, it's not that I give contracts, but just looking at it, I'm like, okay, he's well worth whatever contract they paid when he came to the ring. Contract that did question, Leonard Floyd's contract. Leonard Floyd is only as good as I'm about to get cut or AD is in here with me taking off some of this extra help. You know what I'm saying? Aaron Donald is not going to be able to continue to play at a high level that he's playing. Thus, his retirement situation. He's been in the league. This is year nine. Yeah, I think this is year nine. He got drafted in 2014. So, he's been in the league. This is season nine that he's been in. Season nine, season ten, however you want to say. He cannot continue to play at a high level and everybody else not do their job. I feel like that's Leonard Floyd. Now, Leonard Floyd got to a point last season where, and, and I got it, he, he got nine, he averaged nine sacks per season, um, but a $64 million contract, I think for a four-year period, under his production, nah, wouldn't have done it. I, I wouldn't have given him that money. I probably would have given that money to Sebastian Joseph Day to keep my defensive line straight so that I got interchangeable parts and went and looked for me another edge. Just saying. Um, so, yeah. Are they blowing up the team? Mm, blowing up a strong word, but they are making some moves that are... How's blowing um, up a strong word? You went on record saying you want to trade your quarterback. You traded your best corner. He didn't say he wanted to trade his quarterback. Bruh. They said he is on there. All there. What did they say? They said they are willing to trade Matthew Stafford. That let tells me you're ready to trade your quarterback. Let me say in an interview that is on Bleacher Report. Not sure if it's Adam Schefter. They need to pay us now, too because we use them a lot. You watching? What's, what's, what's my dude Pat McAfee show? You watch too much Pat McAfee, dude. Dude, I love I Pat McAfee show. I, I understand he has some reputable people coming on there. And I understand that this is free agency and this is off season and all this other stuff. But but, but first and foremost, as soon as a person is drafted, gets a contract, <laughs> they are available to be traded or whatever. Now, True. with that being said, if for whatever reason, you do not have the draft capital or the liquidity <laughs> to go and pay for a proper quarterback situation. I'm not going to put it out in the atmosphere that I'm going to give up my quarterback. Now, do I think Matthew Stafford is, is tradable? Almost oh, yeah. He's tradable. For the back injury? Almost oh, yeah. And I think it was a spine contusion. There's basically a bruise on the spinal cord. Most definitely, he's tradable. They've already won. <laughs> um, they've already won. But, with that being said, dude, he already said he's one of the pillars of... He's one of the pillars of... One of the pillars of the Rams. Yeah. He's one of okay, the look, the fine, fine, fine. Maybe they're not blowing it up to what I... I from my opinion, is it's blowing your team apart. But your opinion is different. You are a diehard, so I get where you would have a different version of blowing my team apart. I just don't want to hear nobody say they're blowing their team up, even though they're Bruh, the team up. <laughs> you can't deny, though, that Minnesota has blown theirs to pieces. I don't know what Minnesota's doing. Minnesota's think- blown that team up so bad, I'm surprised they haven't traded Justin Jefferson yet. No. Well, and here's the crazy part. Just definitely Justin will be the only person that won't go anywhere because he's the only person that will allow them to be able to pull in a quarterback that wants to play with a uh, true number one. And he just came off of MVP season. Did you know? Just, did you know whose contract is up next season? Oh, cut, cut. <laughs> he has one year left. 
You think they're giving him an extension? And, Probably not. Uh, no. Uh-uh. Because he's gotten too much guaranteed money. What, first, first contract was three years, 84 mil, and then what was the second? I and know. I think that one was fully guaranteed, too. Yeah, he started this whole fully guaranteed, <laughs> I'm going to say nonsense, but at the same time, it's like, dude, he set a precedence for everybody. To and not everybody paid. wants to do that. Everybody's getting paid. I want my guarantee. Everybody. So, yeah. yes, Kirk, I do think Kirk yeah. Cousins leaves Minnesota. I think that's part of the reason why they're blowing up Minnesota also. Uh, but the other part of it is, too, is because some people are only No, what makes no sense. What makes no sense, though, is, all right, you're offering to trade Dalvin Cook, and I understand his injury his injury history, but you re-signed that Alexander ain't. Madison to be your running back. That ain't, that ain't the reason why they signed him. I mean, why they trade him. They're willing to trade him because he will not take a pay pay. No. Would you? No. No, if I'm a running no, back. Really if I'm yeah, a I mean, running back is on every play, a running back gets hit more than anybody on the team. I am sure not taking a pay cut for any team if I'm a running back. Right. But I'm just saying, think of, especially under this particular running back market, if you got a contract and you got a good contract, I wouldn't take a pay cut either. Cut me, trade me. Exactly. Because Somebody's gonna pay me. I know I'm good enough. If you're somebody like Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, that can basically command an audience to say, "Hey, come get me," you know, now it'd be different if you're in, and I'm going to say Leonard Fournette. You're in Leonard Fournette situation. Leonard Fournette, I think, is a great serviceable running back, but he's not Dalvin Cook. He's not Derrick Henry, but oh, no. he's serviceable. He'll get a decent contract, but he won't get a contract like they can. You know, they, they won't get like... No, without a doubt he won't get a contract like them because he's not a number one running back. He's never been a number one running back. Right. Yeah, I won't say that. I will. I think Jacksonville, I think Jacksonville did it wrong. Mm, no. I would, Jack, Jacksonville, I Jacksonville cut that dude because he was having issues off the field and issues with the team. It wasn't no, we, doing them wrong. Talking, but we're not talking about many four minutes situation like that. He's just saying he was serviceable running back who will get an okay contract compared to a Derrick Henry or Dalvin Cook. So if I'm Derrick Henry or Dalvin Cook, no, I wouldn't take no pay cut. For real. Because at the end of the day, it's a business. You said you were going to give me this. I've been doing this for you. Even Think about Dalvin Cook when he came back last year and from being hurt and how it turned around that offense. I mean, Justin Jefferson was doing his thing. But how much more did it open up the office for Justin Jefferson to be able to become the office player of the year? Exactly. Just saying. You need so, a strong running game. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not taking no pay cut either. Trade oh, me. no, trade me. Not if you're trade top me. five running back, no. no. Right. Come on. Trade me. Now, if that was Jonathan Taylor, was John Taylor, Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah. John Taylor, in Indianapolis. Then you might be able to say, "Hey, take the pay cut because you really sucked last year and you got hurt." Because right now, John oh. Taylor looks like a flash in the pan. That one good season. Right now, and he'll have to come back and have a year like Saquon Bowden. I mean, Saquon Barkley had. Nah. I do about Barkley to get paid by somebody for this past season with the Giants. Oh, yeah. He's about to. It yeah, won't be the Giants because the Giants gave Daniel Jones too much money. No, no, but they tagged him. And if he plays under the tag, which is totally up to him, um, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be one of those things. Man. Hey, um, we need to go to commercial for a sec. Well, not commercial, but go to a break for a sec. Okay, everybody. So check this out. We had a, a about 10 minutes with no video, but it was so good. Uh, the content was too good not to include it. So if you guys saw us or didn't see us, that's the reason why. Either way, man, this offseason so far has, in no form or fashion, disappointed between the Rams and trading uh, Jalen Ramsey. So much. We're not going to be able to cover it all in one episode. Yeah. So, my, my quick situation who is Hunter Long? Who? Um, 
Hunter, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Hunter, Hunter Long was, is the tight end that is a part of the trade for uh, part of the trade for Jalen Rams. Because the Rams got a third. I know they got a third and they got Hunter Long. And they also did some things, some finagling with the money where Jalen Ramsey got fully guaranteed money for this next two years that he's in mind on the contract that he's currently on. So I know the Rams get some dead money hit, but I don't think they get hit as bad. And, of course, they free up cap space. So Mm -hmm. um, I just want to find out who Hunter Long is because he's a part of that trade. But neither here nor there. Um, how good do you think this makes the Dolphins fan? It makes the defense Hello? better. I mean, it makes the defense better. The how much more do you think it? The offense was already good. Both. I guess, like, on outside of Jalen Ramsey, I'm, I'm afraid for Tua, Tagovailoa, but you know, with the whole concussion situation and having a three and them really, you know, having some bad training and medical situations with taking care of him. Um, I just, you know, I'm 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 really mindful and prayerful for him. Like I, I literally have been praying for him that the Lord blesses him to to not have any adverse effects from the concussion situations that he had this past season. Because that's a lot. Not just, you know, for one person, but just imagine some of the players has probably had half that in the seasons that they played and he had it all in one season. So it, it's just like really, really crazy um, on that. But we'll see how the Miami Dolphins turn out with this trade. Everybody, you know, says that Miami won this trade. I know the Rams won the trade in the respect of, you know, the money that they got off the books, um, still allowing their one of their stars to be able to go somewhere. And, it, and it, let me say this. This is one of the things that I love about the Rams organization and some of the other uh, NFL teams that do this for their stars. And that is say, hey, we have to trade you. We don't want to trade you. Where do you want to go? Here's your options. You know what I'm saying? Everybody doesn't do that. Everybody doesn't do it. You know, they did it for Robert Woods. He chose Tennessee. Tennessee, of course, um, cut him this this all season. Yeah, but and now he's he got now they going, Yeah, to Houston, to the Houston, yeah, he's Texas. Houston. Yeah, he's with the Houston Texans. But you know what I'm saying? I like to, like to see organizations do that kind of thing because yeah, players that have put in their time, they they you know, hey, you got to make a decision. They have to be a part of that decision. It's business, but at the same time, it's like you still take care of them. And I think that does a lot for a player to say, hey, if I ever have to go back to this organization or, hey, I left this organization, they were real class act versus these organizations and players. And I think DJ Moore is like one of the players. He didn't even know he was traded until he saw it on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, did you not talk to your agent? There's no possible way that your agent wasn't aware of these situations unless it just happened that quick. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just to see that kind of stuff, I just really appreciate that part of the NFL, you know, and how they take care of players and stuff. So, all right, we talked about the Rams, we talked about the Dolphins, we talked about the Saints, we talked about the NFC South, we talked about a whole lot of stuff. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah, the big elephant. Or the big raven. The big raven. The big raven. Of course. So we're gonna cover three things. Three things. Three, three things. things. First thing is contract. Second thing, franchise tag. Will he play one? Third nope. thing is if he does not play on on the on the franchise tag, what team is the best fit for him? Especially since. There's a possibility, Aaron, and we didn't cover Aaron Rodgers, but we won't have to. He doesn't make stars anyway, so um, we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers on the next. We covered a little. We touched on him going to the Jets, possibly. So po- him possibly going to the Jets, he has to make a decision within the next few days or so. He said, per reports, that it's not going to be long, but 
with Aaron Rodgers having a place, months before he makes the decision. Right. But with Aaron Rodgers having a place, with Derek Carr having a place, with Jimmy Garoppolo possibly going to the Raiders, and other people settling on picks, trading out, getting other folks, where is a good end? We also talk about those teams that some of those teams that said, hey, we're not going to um, do this. So we want to well, talk Carolina about Carolina said that, and then they traded for number one pick, so we knew that. We kind of saw that coming. Right. So we knew what they were doing. Um, so let's talk about his contract first and his contract situation. I found this article on uh, CBS NFL, uh, CBSSports.com, that put an article together a couple of days ago where they chronicled his, I want to say it's his first contract all the way through to his current situation. And let's see here. Like, it, it literally covers um, what year did he get drafted? Was it 2018? Yeah. I could Daniel yeah. Jones made more money than Lamar Jackson. Yes. Lamar Jackson is drafted April 26th of 2018. He is number 32 overall. Um draft pick because they received that pick from the Eagles. Because they traded up to, to move there in the first round to pick him at number 32. So that made him a first round draft pick. Now, his first contract that he signed. And you know Lamar Jackson does not have he does not have an agent. It's him and his mother that has done his contract. His very first contract was a four year nine point four seven million dollar contract with the Ravens. That's the rookie deal? That's the rookie deal. It's 2018. December comes. He goes three and one because Joe Flacco gets injured. It's still 2018. So we go 2018. Now we're in a 2019 season. Season happens. This is his sophomore year. Most people go through sophomore slump. Guess what happens? He's a 2019 NFL MVP. Second year in the, in the league. The only person that's doing better by this particular point is who? Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. That's it. The only person that's doing better by 2000. What? When did Patrick get drafted? 2019? Something like that. I think it's 2019. We're in 2023. I think it's 2019. Because he's been to three Super Bowls, right? Yeah. He won one. I mean, won two, lost one. He's won two, lost one. In four seasons. So we're looking at 2018, 2019. He's <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're at, at this point where he's named unanimous MVP. He outplays his rookie contract by year three. But the the uh, organization says that he has not reached out to them and has no urgency on working out a deal, even though we're all listening. And we, we, we know this in 2021. Long story short, it's like there's lack of communication with now, and even in all that, if it were anyone else, let's use Kyler Murray for an example. Sorry, Kyler no, Murray please. played played nowhere near what um Lamar did. Lamar Jackson has played, but he ends up getting this great big whopping con contract for no nothing. Then, after he gets the contract, or is it before he got his contract? You get, he gets the contract, 
Sean Watson. He had not played for a year and a half. Fast forward into 2020. He, he gets a 200 something million dollar contract with most of it guaranteed. And Lamar has outplayed his contract. They picked up what I think they did they pick up his fifth year option? Lamar don't think he had one. Okay, so and so now he's on he's he's franchise tag, non exclusive franchise tag. He could have played, he could have held out last year. He didn't. He played. He was smart not to play the end of the year. Um where he pulled himself, he was injured, but he never came back. And I think that was his. Deal. Then, whereas, like, you got the Rams, and Rams said, no, we're not going to play Aaron Donald. We're not going to play Matthew Stafford. We're not going to play Cooper Cup. There's no need to. We've already lost our season. Where the Ravens, they actually had an opportunity possibly to play. So what what do you do or what do you say about the Ravens as an organization and Lamar as a quarterback in a situation. It's Lamar Jackson's like really unique situation as in he is clearly I think probably one of the better players of his quarterback class. And I don't know if the Ravens all right. I'm gonna put this delicately. The Ravens offered Lamar a street deal last season and he turned it down. He told them he wanted more money, he wanted a fully guaranteed contract, and he was not going to sign that deal. They offered him a contract extension. He said no. And that, that was like a hundred something million dollars. He said no. He wants more. Okay. Not that Lam- I mean, Lamar Jackson does deserve a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. He is a good quarterback. But the fact that the Ravens, I think the Ravens offered him two contracts last season during the um. Last offseason during the little negotiation period, and he turned down both of them. Yes, he wanted more money. As a owner of a team, your star player sits here and turns down two contracts with a lot of money. At the time before the market was reset, it was going to put him at the top of the pay scale. As an owner, okay. as a coach, doesn't that leave a sour taste in your mouth? Maybe that's why. You're like, no. Yeah. Maybe. But, all right, so I pulled up. I, I wanted to find out what, what, what the offer was that he rejected. Yeah, he, I so, think he got two. He got at least so one. The, and they were good contracts. I want to say, I want to say this is one of the ones that, that he turned down. Okay. So allegedly, the allegedly. first offer, the first offer was six years, one hundred thirty-three million, fully guaranteed at signing. That was the first one. But Deshaun Watson has a two hundred thirty million fully guaranteed deal. And let's say this, Deshaun Watson, Houston, Texas. No, no playoffs, no MVP. Um, no playoffs, no MVP. No nothing. None of that. And Lamar Jackson's second contract. And remember, we talking about Deshaun Watson. This is this we're going off of. 
You got Russell Wilson, who got $124 million. Tyler Murray, who got bumped up, I think, to 103 or whatever, whatever it was that he got. I still think he shouldn't have got any money. He should have been the person to play out the rest of his rookie contract. I just, I, you know, I don't, between him and Aaron Rodgers, I just have this ah, feeling when I talk about Kyler Murray and Aaron Rodgers. You know, hey, as people, as, you know, I love them and may the Lord bless them and keep them. Um, may his grace be upon them. <laughs> but as football players, I understand you got to get what you got to get, but Kyler Murray, his situation, and then, Aaron Rodgers in his situation, he complains and talks about, you know, I don't have this, 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 and this, because they ain't got no money to get. You know, that's the reason why you don't have it. So you know, Kyle is like, bro. Okay. You, you're like five foot four, and you're trying to, you playing quarterback. And it's like, you're good at what you do, but just go out there and play. And you've been doing a great job, but not a Lamar Jackson type of job. Then Dude. Sean Watson comes in here with all of the plethora of things that he's all his drama. Now, now, with that being said, Cleveland is just a janky jacked up <laughs> organization for anybody to be a part of. It's just some craziness going on. Definitely. Cleveland's um, one of those they're their own they're their own. Now I, and I wanna no. say the the second contract was two hundred and fifty million. But okay, what so you offered him a season, million. you offered him two really good contracts, and oh, and only 133 million dollars of 250. Million. They gave him a bigger contract, but oh, only gave yeah. him the same okay, they gave him a bigger contract the second time, but gave him the same guaranteed money, right? So he it, wanted it was, 200 million guaranteed, and they didn't give him that. That and that's what it was, that's what it was. You okay, you tried, basically, I'm okay, so you asked me. For something, and you give me this, and I'm like, no, that's not what I asked for. Then you give me what I asked for, while at the same time not giving me what I asked for. Like I asked for a pair of, I'm gonna go old school. I asked for a, a pair of Jabot jeans. So you bring me an expensive pair of jeans and they look nice, but it's not your bows. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I'm going old school. You you give me I asked for a Ford F-150 and you bring me a Daihatsu whatever. It's, it's, it's still a pickup but it ain't the pickup I asked for. That's what that two hundred fifty million dollars was. Because you still gave me one hundred and thirty three mil that you wanted me to have, but on paper you gave me two hundred fifty, like I wanted in the first place. That's janky. So, with that being said, <laughs> well, I. I mean, yeah, I agree, but I mean, you turn down two contracts, and of course, the Ravens are going to offer you a third. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too. I, I I totally get what you said about about the organization. Like, look, I offered you what I could offer you, and we can we can argue did you all day long, but and they was, offered, okay. This was gets me, and um, we're, we're gonna. I was, I swear we're not gonna just bash a lot of people. Okay, Lamar Jackson is the a running quarterback. This is what gets me. No. They don't no, want to pay no. that man because he's a running quarterback. Is what a lot of people say. It's not true. You st- if, whether he's a running quarterback or not, he's still a good quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and I I want to say this too. I don't I don't want to call him a running quarterback. I want to call him a scrambler, meaning he's a quarterback that is able to run and okay. throw outside of the pocket. All right. So but as I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get hate, and we're going to do this. This is going to be fun. All right. Yeah. All right, this is going to be really as fun because I'm going to get hate mail for this next little comment, then we're going to talk about speculation where we think he's going to end up going. 
as he progressed, he has gotten better in the pocket every year. Okay. Every year. Okay. Every year. Like whereas, Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> You're not gonna like it. No one's gonna like it. <laughs> oh, all right. Lamar Jack down from Lamar Jackson, 130 million guaranteed. Right. He has not won a Super Bowl. He's won one MVP, and he's had pretty good seasons his four years in the league. Correct. He's been one of the best quarterbacks, top ten, top five, since he's been in the league. And with that, the only good quarterback to come out of his whole draft class prior to him, prior to him being, being picked, is Josh Allen. Yeah, agreed. And he's and, the best. I mean, with the with the with the exception of, uh, with the exception of um, Baker Mayfield's one really good season taking the the Cleveland Browns to the playoffs. So, here we go again. This is the part that's gonna make me mad. I had to go look this up because I was curious. You offer Lamar Jackson 130 million guaranteed, 200 mm-hmm. with 133 guaranteed. Not won a Super Bowl, not even mentioned the AFC Championship game. Did only one MVP once. Still one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. Joe Flacco went to the hold on. Joe Flacco went to the AFC Championship game, I think twice. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. Bruh. Joe Flacco got paid when he got Bruh. paid by the Ravens. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. When Joe Flacco got paid by the Ravens, he got paid a $120 million contract over six years. Wait, but you got to look at this. This was prior to. I understand. I completely Cousins. understand. This, the this quarterback market to, has changed since then. This but is pri- we, my, we point not, is, have, my point is, my point is, not wait, wait, Flacco no, wait, won wait. a Super Bowl, but you on the back of his defense. To, uh, come on, I will. I, will I was say, ready to say he got a hundred twenty oh, no. million dollar contract. Still played decent until they cut him for Lamar Jackson. Dude. Who who was the who was the quarterback? Who was the uh who's the quarterback? So, who's my quarterback for the Ravens when they won their first one? For a quarterback who has not won a Super Bowl and has won MVP one time. Bruh. A hundred and thirty three million Dude. dollar guarantee and a two hundred million dollar contract is fair in my opinion. Dude, hold up. One, that's not fair because he does not have Why a is fresh it not fair? Of- he does not have a fraction of the defense. The a fraction of the defense that Joe Flacco played with in all of his years. He don't have a fraction of the offense and Joe Flacco played with. And if he would have took a hundred, if he would have took a twenty million dollar contract guarantee, he never would have had it. Hold on, say that again. He say it again. Say what you just said. He don't said. have a fraction of the defense or the offense that Joe Flacco did when he won the Super Bowl. Now I want you to take everything you just said. About that little contract that Joe Flacco got versus what Lamar is should get. <laughs> Take that and put it in the box. Take that box, close it up, and I want you to throw it away because you just contradicted with that statement about fraction of an offense. And, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add in, and there in the same you. breath I said if he takes he, a two hundred and thirty something million dollar contract guarantee. He'll never have the defense in the offense that Joe Flacco did. Either way, either way, he had to take it. He took a nine million. You're right. He's taking one. He's taking a nine million. He's taking taking a rookie contract and still played on a rookie contract. They've gotten three. They've gotten elite play under a rookie contract. That's worth nine and a half million dollars for what everybody else is paid minimum. And I understand they tried to give him $133 million. But the people that have gotten the $130 million, with the exception of Russell Wilson having a Super Bowl under his belt with Pete Carroll going to two, losing one. I get it. Russ, 
I get it. But Russ, at the end, at the end, look at my hand. At the end, <laughs> just say it. <laughs> at the end, I mean, it doesn't you matter. Look, look so my it thing doesn't is, matter is that, whether it, Joe it, Flacco's it, defense carried him to his Super Bowl victory. I, I bet you he I won it on the did. back of Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. I understand that. Yeah. And he should have got they should, the yeah, fact they should not have given him. him. Who won MVP of that Super Bowl? Joe Flacco. They should not have given him a contract based off of a Super Bowl win. Whereas at the end of the day, Ezra, what Lamar, counts as a Hall the, What looks good of a Hall of Fame career? A Super Bowl ring. But dude, hold on. Regardless of if we talk we talk contract. Lamar hadn't even in the AFC championship game yet. We Okay, okay. So if that's the case, then Nick Foles need to get like all money. Agreed. And they tried to pay Nick Foles. They just do they were smart with their money. <clears throat> Look, bro, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's no offense. Lamar, 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 look, Lamar Jackson, look, bro. All right. If you watch right, this so, somehow, some way. So wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna tell you right now, Lamar. I apologize. I'm not trying to compare you to Joe Flacco. I know you're a better quarterback. Yeah, but no. I think that I think if they were going to offer him a contract and we're going to go to the next thing, where do we think he should go if he does not stay in Baltimore? But I think if they were going to offer him a contract, if they offer 133 guaranteed and he wanted the 250 guaranteed, they should have met him somewhere along the 185, 190 type of situation and, and gave him guaranteed money. And he might have taken it. I, I'm, I'm serious. I believe he would have taken it, especially not having an agent, doing his stuff himself, it's an organization that he probably want to stay with. He already played or is playing under nine million dollars. Now they got now he goes from nine million to thirty two million. You know what I'm saying? Where they could have actually given him the thirty two mil anyway. You know, before now. They could have given him the thirty two mil before now. And then you're trying to rack him up for six years. Shoot. Uh Mahomes got what, a ten year, five hundred twenty five million dollar contract? Agreed. With yeah. over half of it. If not half of a guarantee, Lamar's also. I mean, Patrick Mahomes already got Plus, two Super Bowl rings and probably gonna get yeah, another now one. He, look, now he got two Super Bowl rings. He got three Super Bowl appearances. You know what I'm not saying? Patrick Mahomes, yes. with the way the quarterback market is going right now, I'm redoing my contract here shortly if I win another Super Bowl because I need more money. Nah, man. He don't need to do that. <laughs> he ain't going ahead and keep getting what he got. But you but, probably you know, know why. You know why. You know why he'll get his contract like he is. You know why he's gonna keep it yeah, like that? Because with that contract, the Chiefs will always be relevant as long as Patrick Mahomes is their quarterback. Yep. And the I think the the contract is set up to where as he's winning, they can actually take that money and turn it into guarantees. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Where it turns into guarantees, and they still they end up. Still having somebody getting paid market value plus saving money in the long run. Saving money in the long run. Okay, so what do we think Lamar goes, man? I think Lamar ends up. I was hoping for Washington, but Washington said after all this stuff happened that, you know, they're not going to shop. But it just makes a whole lot of sense, though. The next place I thought was somewhere else, but what do you think? I, what makes a lot of sense is it probably won't go there because then you got to get rid of your quarterback you already have. But I think it would make a lot of sense for Lamar career wise if they do work out something. I don't think they're going to do it. But it's kind of like fantasy franchise playing Madden. Lamar Jackson to Miami. Honestly, to Miami gives them Miami like such a great chance to be in the Super Bowl. They're not going to win a Super Bowl with Tua. Did you know what's such about that though? Like some of the best games he played, one of the best games he played last season was against Miami. You know what I'm saying? That was like one of the best games between him and Tua. It was yeah, like fantasy right now, point. Right now, Lamar like fantasy point like Christmas out of options. Yeah, it was fantasy point Christmas though last year between uh, Lamar and Tua playing playing. Uh, I think of that first game. Um, I was thinking Washington was my first thought. Then Houston was my second thought. The Texans was my second thought. Was a place that he could go because Miami, Miami the Raiders, at, Green. Well, not Green Bay. I'm gonna do a little love. 
You know, I, I, I thought, thought about I thought, Minnesota as a possibility, but it's a long shot. Yeah, that's a trade that would have to be done. Um, um, and there's, I, I mean, there's options it. out there. I don't know if he's going to any of them. He, here's, here's where I thought in Houston. With Houston, I, I believe it was a good spot just because, one, they need a quarterback. Yeah. Two, they have a running game in place. They have um, wide receivers in place. Um, they have new coaching staff. Everything there is another new. option. So everybody I mean, will be lo- learning and growing together. There, there you know is another option for Lamar to another team. I just thought about it. In the easy div- – there's two teams in the same division. Easy division to win. They only got one team that's relevant in it. It's the same division Houston's in. Indianapolis is a possibility. And Tennessee is a possibility. Yeah, I thought about Tennessee, but – they they but they're blowing up their team too, man. They talking about getting rid of Derrick Henry, y'all. And you already know between Derrick Henry, oh man, could you imagine Derrick Henry and Lamar being on the same team together? Can you imagine even with Jonathan Taylor if he goes to Indianapolis, if Lamar decides to go to Indianapolis? Indianapolis has been having this revolving door of quarterbacks coming in. These veteran guys yeah. who aren't worth who are washed up, aren't yeah. worth a darn. And then you bring even Lamar Jackson to take that mantle? Yeah. I think put, that, that would be pretty good. You put Indy right there with Jacksonville fighting. Yeah. All right, dude. So check this out. This is our last thing we are going to get off of here. All right. So we got the draft coming up in April. Yes. Um, who is the quarterback? Not named Young. Not named Stroud, that you think is the dude to go after? Uh, probably Anthony Richardson. I think he's better than Will Levis. Okay. He did sell a bunch of records at the combine. Right. Anthony Richardson. Let's see. I think PFF has oh, still has Bryce Young first. Um, don't see that got, I don't see Carolina got, drafting Bryce Young. They they got Will Levis next. DJ Stroud third, and they got Anthony Richardson fourth. That's PFF. Now. Mel Kuyper, you know, Mel Kuyper always got his stuff going on. Let's see what Mel got. Ooh. You know what? We're not sure what Mel got going on. Either way. <coughs> Excuse me. But well, either way, man, I was looking at it and I'm like, out of those guys, I'm thinking Stroud probably ends up going first. Levis and Richardson. Now, I mean, Bryce Young is probably going to go second for real, but just for me, uh, I'm thinking Stroud I'm thinking Levis and Richardson. And that's not to say that Bryce right. Young, I think people are going to snake on, on Bryce Young's Height. We'll be able to discuss that again at round draft time. Yeah, I think they're going to they're gonna stick on his height. Hopefully things will happen between now and then with pro days and all that other stuff. I'm hoping so we can go live again action. this year for the draft. Yeah, hopefully I, so. I don't – I'm not sure because my work schedule is kind of crazy. Yeah. So I might not be able to go live day one, but I might be able to go live that weekend with us. We have, I've got to figure it out. Um, yeah. I do, everybody, we're probably going to do another Madden rankings episode <laughs> this season okay. because it was fun last season. <laughs> yeah. So, man, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm looking forward to this season. We're going to try to, we're going to try to have more episodes. We're going to have to try to incorporate a broader variety of stuff. A, a like, bigger variety of stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, might even cover some XFL stuff. 
since during this off season. The rough I mean, the rough necks. Yeah. The rough rough necks have yeah. never lost a game. Really? Yes. Yeah, so that, have never lost a game. There's gonna have to be something that we'll look at. Some of the other uh other football leagues. Um, especially since it's off season and this is when they're playing and stuff. But um one of the other things that we're gonna do, look out for our sh- our shorts. Not meaning our clothing, but look out for shorts on YouTube, Instagram. We're gonna try um, to do a also of those. Our platforms. Um, this is like give you a little bit a of really little taste fun. of what some of the episodes are about. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have, have fun. Some episodes about some other stuff that's we we haven't figured out our schedule yet, like as far as episodes, but we I do want to do mad and we're gonna probably we might try to do something for the draft, you know, hopefully, depending on schedule. Yeah. Um, and we will do a couple of episodes where we're in the same place in studio together, um, talking and everything. Definitely. So, um, but um, so with that being the said, shorts, man, the shorts that we post are probably going to be information and opinions. So, really, really check out some shorts on the page. There's. Three yeah. up now, two from Ezra and one from myself. Keep a, yeah, yeah. Keep a look out on them. There's a, the news drop. Between episodes, we're going to try to drop shorts. Oh, um, yeah. Season two, bro. You ready? Yeah, man. Season two. Y'all see it. Oh, oh. <laughs> season two. two. All right. Boom. And yeah. I'm Beanie. All right, man. I'm Ezra. And as always, this is. <laughs>